Hey guys, I'm Eric Ani, Master Plumber here in Minnesota. Today's video is all about electric heat pump water heaters. I've got Renai's new 80 gallon heat pump water heater going in. It's gonna be a fun one, stick around. I think I gotta get on a ladder. All right, so this heat pump here, 80 gallon tank, Renai did something I think is impressive. Uh, they spec'd it out with stainless steel hot and cold connections. Those are three quarter inch. You've got your, um, your pressure relief valve here, temperature pressure relief valve already plumbed to the tank. That's brass, of course. And then down at the bottom, the brass drain valve. All of that is attached and plumbed in the tank when you pull it out of the, the crate, which is a nice feature. All right, guys, installation went really well. I'm super proud of how it turned out. Let's talk about some like facts and figures logistics, right? So you can see it's quite tall. This is an 80 gallon tank with a heat pump on top of it. I measured it out, it's six foot three. That's not short, right? Uh, let's talk about just kind of how it's built. What are some of the features you see just from the outside, right? So on the bottom, we've got the cold connection piping. Top here, we've got hot. We've got an all, and those are connected to stainless steel nipples that were pre-installed in the tank. That's good build quality right there. Uh, I, I was impressed by that. Right here on the side, you've got the temperature pressure relief valve, of course, standard on every tank. And then you've got an all brass drain pre-installed on the bottom of the tank right there, right out the front. Uh, so very impressive material selection that they chose for this uh, steel tank here. This is a steel tank. It's got an anode rod, and that's behind this housing here amongst the heat pump system on the top here. Right in the front, you've got access covers to standard electric heating elements, right? 4,500 watt elements, top and bottom. And then you've got some really cool things. Maybe you saw when I was unboxing is some handles built into the side of the tank. That's nice. I haven't seen any tanks with handles on them before. It made moving this behemoth around a little bit nicer, I gotta admit. And those handles, I mean, sure, this is large and it's heavy and it's, and it's big, but those handles actually did help me and assist me to position it where I want it. All right, let's just look at it as it sits here, right? We've got a thermostatic mixing valve. We've got a thermal expansion tank for potable water. We've got the power connections right here and easily accessible. One thing about power on this REHP is it'll run 208 or 240, okay? And the connect connection points were nice terminal strips. Lots of room in this box. It was easy to access and I didn't have giant, you know, uh, wire nuts and I didn't have to try to stuff all of that in this box. That was a very nice uh, connection point and very simple, right? I've got a disconnect on the wall right behind the water heater. Uh, thermostatic mixing valve, right? We're storing water in this tank at 135 degrees. That's what I've got the control set to. And the reason why I store it at a little bit higher temperature than needed is so that we get a, effectively an increased volume and it helps with recovery times when there's a demand on the tank. If we're storing hotter water than we need, it effectively increases storage volume and deliverable gallons per hour because we're mixing cold with the hot to give us a safe temperature on the outlet side at the faucet. So this is a thermostatic mixing valve. 
check into those if you're not familiar. All right, let's talk about the place, the room that you place this in, right? So if you read the manual, if you look at other water heaters on the market, you look in the, the brochure for this one. This, require, this water heater requires a room of 700 cubic feet, okay? So if you're not, if you're not really sure what that means, that, think of a room that is seven by 10 by 10, okay? 10 foot uh, high, 10 foot wide, seven feet deep. That's 700 cubic feet. The reason you need that amount of space is this heat pump is pulling heat out of the air in that space. And that volume is, should be enough to satisfy the load on a tank water heater like this. Now, of course, larger, like we're in this room here, is even better. All right, this room is gonna cool down a little bit and it's also gonna be some dehumidification happening because of how a heat pump operates, right? Well, if I were in a smaller space, I might have to do something like duct it. So I've got a couple shrouds here that would fit onto the side where the outlet uh, exhaust connection is right here on the side of the heat pump. And then also the inlet, which is right here on the top, all right? This could sit on top and could be piped in from outside or another room that's much larger and supply uh, enough heat and air to this unit, to the heat pump through a duct, right? If you don't have the option for ducting, maybe you don't have the space for, or maybe you're in a small space, uh, you can get, look at the manual, there's provisions for like a louvered door or having additional openings in the wall to increase, effectively increase the volume of the room. We didn't need those in this installation. We've got a room that's at least 25 by almost, I think, 10 foot wide. We're way over the uh, um, cubic foot needed to satisfy this heat pump. So thermal expansion. If there's a check valve on the cold line, uh, regardless of it being a city or a well, you do need to accommodate for expansion. We've got a check valve on this well here, and so we've got a thermal expansion tank sized per the volume, acceptance volume needed for an 80 gallon tank. All good. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, check out Renai's website, read the manual for the REHP. Controls. One thing that's really nice about this unit is everything is accessed from the front, right? I love the look and feel and the touch of the control. It's got a nice layout of buttons and they're explained very nicely in the brochure or in the manual, right? But we've got this set in economy mode. We've got temperature settings input into it. And we're not gonna go through step-by-step step on how this works, but it's very simple. There's a lot of features built into it. First and foremost, you set the time of day. You actually set the day of the week. Okay, you're not inputting a date, but just day of the week and time of day. And the reason that's important is because you've got some programming available for this. So like think of a setback thermostat. You've got week long settings for programming. You've got individual day settings and you've got up to six times per day. You can input a different type of operating mode and and whether it's on or off temperatures, things like that. Very cool. All of that information is available on in the manual and on Renai's website. I've got, uh, just with a quick touch of a button, I can hit the arrow up. It says that I've got the tank set to 135 degrees Fahrenheit. You can set this in Celsius as well. Uh, and I've got it in economy mode and it's displaying as it sits there idle and in standby, the tank temperature and it says 128 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, it also says the time here, it's military time, so 24 hours, right? Uh, and I don't have any programming put input to it right now, but let's talk about the operating modes. So there are four operating modes with an additional mode, which is vacation mode, okay? So you've got vacation mode that's displayed very easily on this control here by pushing this mode button. So this mode button will just page us through. Right now it says that we're in economy mode. If I hit it one more time, we're in heat pump mode, but I'm gonna start up at vacation. So vacation mode means uh, you go into that mode and you can input the number of days you're going to be on vacation. All right. And then you would save that. That would set it up right now. Let's say we're on seven. That means from counting from now for seven days, it's going to only maintain 59 degrees Fahrenheit in the tank. It's not going to run, uh, and maintain a normal temperature. That 59 degrees basically is just protection of the water heater in case it were to get too cold in your house for some reason, right? So it's not gonna protect your plumbing outside of the water heater, but it's gonna maintain 59 degrees at the water heater. 
um, if I push the mode button one more time, it brings me to hybrid. You've probably heard about hybrid mode in, in heat pumps many times already. So hybrid is this. It utilizes both the heat pump itself and the electric elements. These are 4,500 watt elements. This is a 500 watt uh, heat pump, all right? So combined, you're us utilizing the most amount of power available to give you the fastest recovery but you're losing out a little bit on the efficiency or the uh, operating costs, right? If I hit mode one more time, and you can leave it there, and you can utilize these mo different modes throughout your programming as well. Hit mode one more time, I get to E heater. What that means is basically, it's just the electric elements. That's the mode itself. If I leave it at E heater, it's only gonna use the 4,500 uh, watt upper and lower elements. Hit mode again economy now this is where Renai recommends you leave the water heater in for your customers uh, if you want the most amount of recovery with the most amount of savings on energy right so this what economy means is it's prioritizing the heat pump that's gonna be its number one uh, go-to source as where it's gonna start but if there's a higher demand place on the tank it's gonna sense that and it's also gonna use the heat pump along with the electric elements. So kind of like that hybrid mode, but it's not utilizing both all the time. It's only if needed, it will kick on the electric elements. And then if I hit it one more time, we're in our fourth operating mode and that's heat pump only. Now that's gonna be the most efficient, lowest operating cost, but it's at the expense of a longer recovery, right? It's just gonna take longer to recover. I'm gonna put it back into economy just like Renai recommends that's going to provide the probably the best performance for my customer as far as uh, faster recoveries but trying to prior prioritize the lowest amount of energy use all right let's talk about what a heat pump is we haven't even got that far yet guys and we're almost done with this video so stay with me we've got the heat pump sitting on top of this water heater heat pump think of it like the reverse of like your your refrigerator right your refrigerator is a heat pump it's taking the heat that's inside of the insulated box and it's trying to expel it out into the room so it cools down in the box right well what we're trying to do is take the heat from the space right it's gonna it's gonna take that liquefied refrigerant that's in this this uh compressor or in this heat pump on the top of the tank and it's gonna turn it into a gas and that compressor is going to push it through this micro channel blanket that is wrapped around this steel tank behind this insulated jacket all right so that that uh vapor refrigerant in that micro channel blanket wrapped around this tank is going to transfer that heat from the refrigerant from that coil into the uh water through the wall of the tank we're not mixing refrigerant or water or anything like that but that's where your heat exchange is happening when the heat pump is operating. That refrigerant turns back to a liquid as it cools down and it returns back up to the compressor. There's the, um, all the controls in this self-contained unit right there. The process is constantly operating in heat mode. It, while it's operating in heat mode, heat pump mode is doing that refrigeration process, pulling the heat out of the air, putting it into the water. That's what a heat pump uh, water heater does. And then you've got your different modes of operation, right? Like I said, this is a steel tank. There is an anode rod and that's accessed behind this shroud right here. Beyond that guys, it's pretty basic and straightforward, right? You're probably not used to seeing side tappings on tank water heaters, maybe you are, but it's, there's really nothing special about that. You can now see your piping is on the side instead of only from the top. Um, it gives you a little more room to do some things here. You probably want to insulate these to increase the efficiency overall as well. Display was easy for me to navigate through. I, I, I'll be honest, I did read the manual. This is the first one I did, but it was pretty intuitive. The display I haven't talked about yet, but you'll see in the manual, there's a whole bunch of further information you can access through what they're calling engineering codes or engineering functions in this uh, control. Those are gonna give you access to things like uh, maintenance, uh, error codes, and energy use, things like that. There's a whole, I think like 30 different parameters 
in the engineering functions of this control. That's all available in the installation operation manual. And overall, I think it looks nice. I'm proud of how it turned out. Uh, I'm blown away by its performance already. In the short amount of time this thing is operated, it's elevated the temperature easily. It is maybe a little cooler in the room. I don't know, Tim? Tim's the camera guy, he's, but he's never in front of the camera, but I talk to him once in a while in my videos, I like it. But you know, it's, it, uh, it's gonna work well in all climates, to be honest with you. I'm in Minnesota, right? So we pay to heat our houses for six, seven months a year. But it's not going to put any t you know major load on the house by any means it's just going to utilize the the energy that's sitting in the air already so i'm impressed by it guys thanks for watching if you've watched all the way to this the end of this video i'm just going to ask you to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already uh, if you like this video please share it with somebody uh, and also if you have any information about heat up water heaters you want to share with me I i'd love to read your comments below so leave that with me if you got questions i'll try to answer them I do appreciate Renai for sponsoring this video and working with me to teach me everything I needed to know to make this a successful installation. Guys, I'm Eric Ani from Mechanical Hub and owner of Ani Plumbing here in central Minnesota, master plumber. I love doing stuff like this and I love that you watch the channel. Thanks and have a good day.